So your app compatible standing desk from Right Angle is all assembled and ready to go, but you find yourself having some issues pairing it with the application on your mobile device. Well, in today's video, I will take you through the step-by-step -step process of setting that up and configuring your personalized settings. Hi guys, it's Camille from Right Angle. So today I'm here to help make sure that setting up your mobile application and connecting it to your standing desk is easy and painless. Cause I know that sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is take you through that step-by-step -step setup process for that and help you actually personalize your settings for the various features. Now, if you are looking to maybe see one specific part of this video or you know, you're already partially the way through the setup but now need some help, what I would suggest is scroll to the description box and you will see some timestamps next to the various sections we discussed. Go ahead and click on one of those timestamps and that will take you to the uh, spot of the video that you want to see. But if you are right away at the beginning, make sure to keep watching. The first thing that we're going to do is download the New Heights mobile app from the App Store. So we're going to go into the iOS App Store, going to search New Heights, and I'm going to go ahead and download that. So as soon as you open up the app for the first time, you'll see a pop-up requesting New Heights to send you notifications. And I suggest selecting allow, just so you can get those reminders from Activity Assistant, uh, which is one of the features in the app that we'll get to shortly. Now you're going to have to select these next toggles. So the first one's going to be for activating voice control. I'm going to hit okay, so it allows it to use Siri. I'm then going to also activate the one touch function. And lastly, I'm going to select the, I agree to terms and conditions. Now this is going to pop up. I suggest that you go through and read through it all. And once you have gone through and read everything, you can then hit close. Now go ahead and click continue at the bottom of the page. Now the activity assistant settings will pop up. Now, if you'd like to activate activity assistant, you will first select your desired sitting time. For me, I'm going to choose around an hour and a half. And then you will go ahead and select your desired standing time. I like to do it in about 15 minute increments. So I'm gonna do it around 15 minutes, 16 is perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and select that next toggle for activating activity assistant. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and click continue. Here you'll see on the page, it's showing the connected and visible desks. Now you're going to connect to the desk popping up by clicking on the name, which in this case is the 1908 number. As soon as I click on that, it is now connected. If for some reason you select the wrong desk, if there's more than one available for you, just go ahead and click the name one more time and it will pop back down to visible. But in this case, I do want that desk. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and click the auto connect feature by clicking the auto connect button next to the name. So this means that anytime that I'm in the Bluetooth proximity of my phone and standing desk, they will automatically pair to each other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. So you've now completed the initial setup requirements of your app. If you'd like to see the other features and learn how to configure those settings, please make sure to keep watching. you'll find your program desk heights on the home page. You're going to notice that the default names for these presets are one through four. Now let's go ahead and change the name and the height of these desk presets. So I'm going to go ahead and click the pencil icon next to number one. And you'll see here that I can change the name. So what I'm going to do first, is I'm just going to change this to the word sitting. Done. Now the name that you choose can be anything as long as it's less than 14 characters. So anything between one and 13 characters, you're golden. Now to change the height, I'm going to go and use the arrows on the screen to change my sitting height. We're gonna have it be 28.43 inches. So now that I have done that, I'm going to click save. 
Once you're done, go ahead and click close at the top left hand side of the screen. And you now see that it's been updated. You'll simply repeat this process for any of the other height positions that you'd like to program or change in the future. What I'm first going to do is go ahead and click on the pencil icon next to sitting. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the button towards the bottom of the screens that says add voice command. And you'll see this add to Siri page pops up. Now remember when you're going to add a voice command, you don't need to say something like, hey Siri, for those of you who might not be as familiar with this iPhone feature, you'll simply speak which action you'd like Siri to take. So for example, for my sitting position here, my command could be something like sit down or sit please. It's entirely customizable and you can choose which phrase works best for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the red button to record. Sit down please. If maybe you said something incorrectly or Siri didn't quite hear you in the way uh, that you intended, you can go ahead and click edit. What's happening is there's two options for me. Sit down please or set down please. Sometimes Siri has a difficult time hearing the difference between those two words. Uh, and you can always re-record that phrase if need be. But for this time, Siri heard me correctly, so I'm going to keep the sit down please. Another cool part to adding a voice command is that you can add more than one voice command for the same height position. I can record one that says sit down. I can record one that says please sit. I can record one that says sit down please. I can have multiple voice commands associated to one single height position. You don't need to go ahead and click save on this screen again because as soon as you select done on the previous one, it saved it to this position. Then you hit close on the top left of the screen and you're all set to go. You just follow this process and repeat that for any of the other height positions that you'd like to program a voice command for. Let's go ahead and change the name of our table. Now this can be especially helpful when there are two or more app compatible desks within your workspace. It will just make it a bit easier when you're trying to connect to your specific desk that you want. Now to find this, we're going to first click on the hamburger menu that you kind of see in that top right hand corner of the screen. And then it will take you to this main settings page. Then what you're going to do is select that second option called settings. And then you're going to select the fourth option down called table name. Here we can go ahead and change the name of our desk. Keep in mind that you are limited to using 13 characters. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my desk name to my first name. I'm gonna go ahead then and click save. Now, whenever you update your table name, the table will automatically go into reset mode. So this means that when I go back to the home page. Yeah, I will see this little pop-up on the top of the screen. As you can see, it's indicating that the desk needs a reference position. And the instructions are really simple here. It just says, keep button pressed until it disappears. So I'm going to hold that button that says reference. And then as soon as it disappears, you can let go and you are all set. Now adding container stops allow you to limit your desk range of travel to help avoid collision with any items that might sit below or above the desk, such as an upper shelf or a mobile pad. Now to go ahead and find this, we're going to click on the hamburger menu on the top right hand of the page. Then we are going to click the settings option and you're going to select container stop. So the top part just kind of explains to you again what container stops are. It does give you a note saying that container stops can be added and deleted at any time in case something were to change. And please note that if your table loses power or for whatever reason you have to reset your desk, in order for the reset to be successful, the desk will have to go to its very lowest position, meaning that if you have a lower container stop set, the desk is going to have to go below that height. So if you have something that's in the way, such as a mobile pad or a chair, please make sure that you remove those items from underneath the desk prior to doing the reset. First, we're going to select which container stop we want to set. I'm going to go ahead and choose the upper stop. 
Then I will go ahead and move my table to my desired position. And we'll use the arrows on the screen to do that. Now, if you're noticing that your table is not moving past a certain height, it will likely be because of a previously saved container stop. To fix this, you will need to click reset at the bottom of the screen. This will change the preset setting, which is indicated right below the current table height, and it will go back to 46.73 inches. Now, since my preset setting is already at that height, I'm going to go ahead and use the arrows to move my desk. Now, I want my container stop to be just under 41 inches so that when I go to my standing height, I don't have the possibility that my desk might hit an upper shelf located on my wall. And now that I have the perfect height for the upper stop, I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And to complete the lower stop, it's just going to repeat the same process as the upper stop. The collision sensitivity is the component of the gyrosense sensor that identifies and prevents damage from collisions. And this is included with all of the right angle new heights standing desks. Now to go ahead and find this, we're going to click on the hamburger menu on the top right hand of the page. And then we're going to select the second menu option labeled settings. And then you'll see it's going to be the first option there for collision sensitivity. So go ahead and click on that. So here you can choose to enable or disable the collision detection setting. And if you're using the voice control or one touch feature, we highly encourage you to have that collision detection turned on. So you'll see here that my collision detection is deactivated. And I wanna go ahead and activate that since I do use voice control and the one touch feature. Now to deactivate it, I'm actually going to go ahead and select one of the sensitivity settings. It won't allow you to just hit the deactivation toggle. See if I click that, it's just bouncing back. So you're going to go ahead and select whichever sensitivity setting you want. I'm going to just select the standard sensitivity. And as soon as I click that toggle, the deactivated toggle from the top section goes back to the left, meaning that the collision sensitivity settings are set to on. And then you've successfully changed your collision sensitivity settings. So now I'm just going to hit the back arrow and go back to the home page. Thank you so much for watching today. Now, I hope that this was able to help make the setup of your mobile application with your standing desk a little bit easier. If you have any other questions though, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to us by phone or email. And now make sure that you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all of the latest from Right Angle products. I'll catch you guys next time.